Hey everybody, Ed Holman, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. Hope everyone's doing well today. Today I thought I would do what must be the 714th review of the Eversolo DMP A6 Streamer DAC. Uh, a lot of reviews on this, a lot of hype around this unit, a lot of sales for this unit as well. Um, this unit is on loan to me from James Roberts, who is of course our ABX audiophile. And while James had it, he did replace the switching standard switching power supply for a Beechnik linear power supply. Uh, and that adds about $300 to the $850 cost. I never heard it with the switching power supply, only heard it with the linear power supply. The unit itself is just absolutely magnificent. I mean, it looks like it's milled from a solid piece of aluminum. Just everything about it, fit and finish, the seam lines, everything is just absolutely beautiful. The screen is beautiful, nice contrasty, you know, good detail, good resolution. The knob feels great, just, just magnificent. And it has a great set of goes into's and goes out's. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn the unit off real quick and we're gonna spin it around and take a quick look at it. So on the back, as you can see, very nicely full featured antennas for wireless bluetooth etc uh iec socket and master power switch rj45 jack for a hardwired network connection and then it has an hdmi connector and this i think is a big miss on this unit not for me but i think for a number of people it is not hdmi eARC. it is an hdmi audio output now i'm sure the designers were thinking okay this is going to be connected to possibly a big home theater receiver or some other sort of amplifier or preamplifier that may already have an HDMI eARC connection on it. I don't know. It doesn't, it's not relevant to me, but I think most people would expect an HDMI eARC, not this multi-channel audio output thing that I don't really understand and didn't do a deep dive on, honestly. Two USB-A, so you can connect a hard drive, memory stick, whatever, and that's great. And I did do that to play DSD files through it. Does, and this is, I think, a great feature for a streamer DAC. It has input, so you can use it as a DAC. Um, spit if an, an optical input and a USB-C. So you can connect your computer and you can run your Spotify, Tidal, CoBuzz, uh, 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 J River, I ran Audivana through it. It's also Rune compatible, so that's a very nice feature. And again, having those inputs to use it as a DAC eliminates one box in the system, potentially. Now, let's say you have a really, really good DAC. Um, it does have the SPDIF and, and coaxial output, so you can run it into an external DAC. And it has single-ended and balanced uh, outputs, and it is a true balanced unit. And we'll talk about that because of some of the technology inside. So it does use dual ESS Sabre 9038 Q2M DAC chips. And of course, one per channel allows it to have a balanced architecture internally. It also uses uh, um, Texas Instruments OPA 1642 op amps. I did not look to see if they were replaceable. I didn't open the unit. I saw a picture online. Um, it's not mine and I didn't want to mess with it. You know, take, I want to take good care of it, but it also has a great feature. In addition to those USB A's you saw in the back to connect memory devices, it has a internal compartment. If you flip it over, there's a little panel you can remove and you can put in up to a four terabyte NVMe drive in there. And then if this is on your network, then it, this can become a NAS server for your music for everywhere in the house. And I think that's kind of a cool feature. Um, it also supports, and I'm going to read the list because I don't have them all memorized. It supports Tidal Cobuzz, High res Audio, Amazon, WebDAV, UPnP, obviously, uh, U, uh, UPnP streaming, which is, I did use it that way uh, on a couple of occasions, AirPlay, DNLA, Spotify, and Tidal Connect and Cobuzz Connect, although I don't know that there's a Cobuzz Connect. It does have Bluetooth uh, 5.0 and uh, AAC, so it's got all your more popular Bluetooth connections. Um, and it can support 32-bit uh, up to 768 and up to DSD 512. The app is interesting. I had a couple of issues with the app, and it's just me. Let me go here and show the album art again. Um, the display is really quite good and it's got a neat feature. Obviously we can have, let me go ahead and get the track started and we can have, uh, VU meters, which is always fun. And they'll start dancing in just a second when the track catches up. So there we go. And we'll go back to the album, main screen and then back to the album art. So here's one of the things on the app and I'll kind of show you all of the headers are so tiny. It's really hard to see. And when I try to push one, sometimes I'm pushing the wrong one and then I have to back out and go back in. So I found the app, while it's completely comprehensive, has probably too many uh, options 
um, just way too many, or it should nest them a little differently. So there's not so much information on the screen at one time that it, you kind of have to read it before you can act. It's less intuitive that way. And maybe that's the right way to phrase it. Um, I also found it to be rather unresponsive and it's not the tablet because I use the tablet for Stream Magic and Artivana remote and all kinds of other, and uh, um, Volumio and so forth. And I never have any issues with it. So it's a bit unresponsive with the app, although the app is completely stable, it loaded fine. Um, it found the unit okay once I got it on the network properly. Um, and so that was no problem, but I just found the app to be a little bit clunky. One of the other things I didn't care for is I, it does not output on the coax or spit if optical unless you choose to. So as I'm trying to compare this with other uh, products I have and other devices I have here in the studio, I couldn't just simply toggle back and forth on an input. So let me give you an example. I had this hooked up to everything I have in the, in the house uh, and every pair of speakers, every amplifier, every, com every conceivable combination I could come up with. So initially I had it connected to the Shit Freya Plus, which I just did a review on, and that was connected to the Orchard Audio uh, Star Crimson Ultra DMC 2.5 uh, Class D amp, and I used it connected balanced in. And I also wanted to connect it to an external deck so I could try to suss out the DAC characteristics of this. And I also wanted to use it as just a streamer going into another DAC as well. But I couldn't just simply switch the inputs on the Freya to do so, because I could connect a single ended or balanced, and I could connect to uh, a DAC coming in on the Freya single ended or balanced and just kind of toggle back and forth between those inputs. You can't do it. You have to go into the menu on the app or on the face and select optical out. So I found that to be, a little bit kind of inconvenient more than anything. Is it a deal breaker? No, but it was really inconvenient, especially, you know, most people aren't going to even run into that issue, but here I am reviewing product and it became an issue for me. And so it was not a big deal. The other thing too, that I find a bit confusing is why it has a touch screen at all. Um, now I did a review of a product and I said, if it, you know, touch screen, I could get, I could understand if it's on your desktop. Um, but, I wouldn't put this on a desktop. First of all, it's big. And second of all, it doesn't have a headphone jack. Um, and it's awful expensive to have on a desktop rig, unless you're really, really into headphones and so forth. So the touchscreen itself, I'm not sure adds any value to me because I'm sitting 12 feet away and I'm not gonna interact with the touchscreen. I'm not gonna get up. I'm gonna interact with the Android app or the iOS app uh, to, to control the device. So I find that a little bit confusing. And I find, I think, some of this, as John Darko would say, these units, these Ever Solo units have loads of audiophile catnip. And I think a touchscreen is part of that. And functionally, I don't think it adds any value personally. So uh, what did I think? I had it connected to the Freya and the Orchard Audio. I had it connected to the Cambridge Evo 150. I had it connected to my Cambridge AXR 100. I had it connected to a vintage Marantz PM74D Class A amp. Um, I tried it in every configuration. I tried it as a streamer taking its digital output into external DACs, shit Bifrost, my Bifrost multi-bit modified unit. I took it out to, uh, I have two Gishelli uh, DACs in right now, a J2S socketed and a J3 Pro, both of which are the AKM 4499 slash 4191 hybrid Delta Sigma multi-bit DAC configuration. Um, and I tried it as a DAC only feeding it a signal from Artivana, feeding a signal from a Cambridge MXN 10 streamer optically, just to just to, to check the DAC quality and so forth. So I hooked this thing up a zillion different ways, balanced and single-ended, but mostly balanced, um, and found it to be not to my taste. It is magnificent. It's really well built. I can't fault the quality of it. And I will say that I think it is a great value. Even with the linear power supply, it is a tremendous unit. Um, but here's my, here's the problem. I'm not a Delta Sigma DAC guy and I've got a bunch of them and I've got AKM DACs and I've got ESS DACs and I've had them in over the years. And, and obviously um, until I got my shit by frost a few years ago, that's my reference, the multi-bit. Um, I used them just as comparison or in other systems in the house and things like that. But I brought them all down here and I compared them all. And I found that this has um, a common issue for me, and that is the ESS Sabre glare. 
Um, it is a hot unit on the top end, upper mid range and treble. I don't know that it's detail. I don't know that there's more resolution. I just think there's an awful lot of extra energy there. And I also find that almost all Delta Sigma DACs that I've listened to are thin in the bass. They don't have a ton of real extension or definition quite so well. Um, I think an ESS really kind of, in my opinion, suffers from that, uh, maybe a bit more than AKM. Um, I, I, it's just a personal thing. So it has that Delta Sigma glare. It is, I think, real energetic on the top end. Now, that said, if you have uh, rolled off or softer, or warmer system or tube gear or something like that, this could be magnificent. And it is, without a question, no question about it, it is the best uh, ESS and or Delta Sigma DAC I've ever heard. It is really, really good. But I got to squeeze out the fine details and I just couldn't warm up to its sound. And that's just me personally. This is not a bad unit. It's not a knock against the unit, maybe a knock against me, I guess. But it is uh, um, just, I just couldn't, I just couldn't warm up to it. I couldn't find any real love for it. I think it's really well built. I think it does a lot of great things. I think it's worth every penny it costs, but it's just, it's not for me. And that's that. I don't know what else to say. Um, if it sounded better, it would be magnificent. And as I said, it is the belt, probably the very best Delta Sigma deck I've ever heard. So anyway, I apologize to anyone who bought it. I hope I'm not offending anyone. It's just my personal opinion. And this is a hundred percent subjective. Um, anyway, that's that. If you liked the video, maybe <laughs> if you could give me a like, if you would subscribe, I would really appreciate it. 80% of the folks that watch my videos aren't subscribed. And if you were to subscribe, it would greatly help the channel because the more subscribers I have, the more credibility I have with the manufacturers to get product in for review. And that helps grow the channel. Now I'm not doing this for a living. I'm doing it for fun, but based on a lot of the comments and the number of likes I get with my videos, most of you are enjoying it as well. And I hope so. And that's really kind of the goal, but I would love to be able to get more and interesting equipment in, uh, just to expose you guys to more stuff. And obviously for me as well. So anyway, please like subscribe, comment. Anybody who's commented knows that I respond to the comments and I'm sure I'm going to get some really good comments on this video and I'm looking forward to it. I really am. Uh, so please comment in the description of the video are, uh, a list of all the equipment I have in the studio with Amazon affiliate links. Uh, below that are uh, a list of playlists with a lot of different tracks on it, many of which I use in testing gear. I'd love to have you guys listen to those and share with me your thoughts on it. I'm also going to be putting together very shortly a community page with anonymous playlists from you guys. And I would love every one of you to send me a playlist. I'll post it on the community side. I have viewers around the world, so I'd love to hear what everybody's listening to in other parts of the world uh, and, you know, what everybody's tastes are and things like that. So I think that discovery of new music is really probably the best part of this hobby is finding new stuff that you really like. At least that's where I get most of my enjoyment. So anyway, again, please like, subscribe, comment, follow me on Instagram. I really, really appreciate the time you take watching my videos. I really appreciate the time you take to comment. Uh, I am grateful truly grateful. This is Ed Homewood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel, signing off and saying, now it's time for you to go listen to some music, please. Thank you very much.